Okay, so last time we, we introduced uh, um, the notion of measurable set. You know? So we define it, I just recall you briefly. <coughs> <coughs> we said that E is measurable, and we denote with this uh, italic hem the, the collection of measurable set if uh, for any um, set A in the set of parts of R, we have that the following somehow um, the composition holds. So we have that the outer measure of A is equal to the outer measure of A intersected E plus the outer measure of A minus E. Okay. Okay, then we also observe that by the uh, subadditivity property, indeed, in general, I mean, it's always enough to prove just one side of this inequality, which is this one. Okay, the other one come directly, no? Okay, so we can always just refer to this as also in the definition. So another outcome of the other, of the, of the lesson of last time is the following, is that we prove that this collection is a sigma algebra. This somehow was the main, uh, the main result that we prove, which means that the empty set belongs to M, that if we have a set, a measurable set, then also the complement would be measurable. So this definition is symmetric with respect to the operation of taking the complement. And then if you have a, a sequence, a collection, a, con a countable collection of uh, measurable set, <coughs> prove <coughs> that indeed also the countable union uh, of the set in such a collection is, uh, is measurable, okay? Okay, so the, 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 the lesson of today will concern to somehow, mainly to provide some example of, uh, of measurable set because so far we just said that the empty set is measurable and the full real line is measurable. And uh, uh, so indeed we will, we will prove, which is, I mean, is quite um, somehow obvious that the interval are measurable. And we shall see a theorem that allows you to, uh, to approximate <coughs> measurable set by means of nice set. So we will say that uh, um, the set in the collection that I introduced uh, um, last time, you remember this F sigma and this G delta, we will see that a uh, measurable set is nearly uh, a set of that kind up to a set uh, uh, of measure zero, okay? So we have to look, we, we will use this theorem of approximation many times, okay? Oh, okay, so I will just... <coughs> So the first theorem is the following. This, call it lemma if you want. Okay. We have that the interval. We start with the, this uh, this interval. This open interval a plus infinity is is measurable, okay, 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 as usual, we take any set, a test set A, so let A be any set, okay, 
Okay, and we define by means of this any set, this test test and our interval, these two set, the set A1 given by um, A intersected A plus infinity and the set A2 which is given by A intersected minus infinity and A closure. So uh, this is basically the set that you use uh, when you have to prove the, the, um, the measurability of, uh, of this interval, no? because this is the intersection and this is A minus this set here, or A intersected, okay? Okay, what we want to prove? So we want to prove the following things. We want to prove, we observe that this is enough to prove this inequality, so that m star of a is, is larger or equal than m star of a1 plus m star of a2, okay? Okay, we immediately observe that one case is very trivial, so if m star of a is equal to plus infinity, then we are done, okay? There's nothing to prove. This is automatic, automatically satisfied. So we consider the other case. Okay, now we use the definition of outer measure by means of the infimum and so on. So, so we know by definition of outer measure okay that for any epsilon positive there exists a collection there exists um, okay there exists countable collection of open of open intervals i n okay such that we have uh, okay which cover a so we have a an interval i n such that this cover a okay and for which we have that the sum of the length of this open uh, interval are less or equal than m star of a plus plus epsilon. So we call it, okay, let me call it two star. Okay. Okay, so by means of this, uh, uh, this interval in, uh, in, the, in the collection, we define other set. So we define, in analogy with what we did here, we define this, uh, 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 this collection, this subsequence, <coughs> E n prime has, I, uh, I n prime, sorry, uh, I n intersected our set, uh, our interval a plus infinity, and uh, Similarly, I n two prime equal to <coughs> I n intersected uh, the complement. Okay, so minus infinity a. Okay, so these are interval. So we know that the outer measure coincide coincide with the notion of length on intervals. So we have that the length of I n and they are disjoint, of course. This is equal to the length of i n prime plus the length of i n second. Okay, we know that this coincide. Uh, this is because okay, they are disjoint. I n intersected i n. We have that. Uh, this is why the, this because is because the length coincide 
the notion of length coincided with the notion of outer measure over intervals. Okay, so we have this inequality and call it star. Okay. And now we, we are able to prove this. Okay, we observe, oh, we have that since our, uh, okay, A1 is contained in the union of I and prime, and analogously we have that A2 is contained in the union of I and 2 prime, what we get. Okay, we have just simply by <coughs> monotonicity that M star of A1 is less or equal than the sum over N of the length of I N prime and M star of A2 for the same reason is less or equal to the sum of um, the length of I N second okay this is um, this, this comes from by the monotonicity and uh, the the countable subadditivity property now you combine this these two fact which we, we proved okay uh, okay so we try to collect all this fact and we if we sum up um, <laughs> sorry, summing up we get okay we get that m star of a one plus m star of a two is less or equal than the, these two sum plus I and second and now we use this fact this is equal to the sum of L I N of N and here we use this okay and this okay just this is for two star and this is come by star this is equal to m star of a plus epsilon and of course as usual this is true for any epsilon positive arbitrary small so we get what we want okay so we finally get that m star of a one plus m star of a two is larger or equal than m star of a okay so this concludes our proof. Ah, yeah, 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 you're right. <laughs> what I, yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Thank you. And have this smaller, smaller, the second step. Where? Here. Ah, yeah, 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 here. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Ah, and by the way, I, I think I reversed the, this is two by two star. And because I call, and this is by star, I mean, according to this. No? Okay. Okay, so with this lemma, we, we, we provide <coughs> one example of, of measurable set, okay?
May I erase? Okay, so do you think that uh, f from this uh, lemma we can deduce also the measurability of other set, of other interval? So you can uh, somehow express any other interval in terms of uh, intervals constructed, in terms of set constructed with, uh, with this, this set here, okay? Okay, so we say that, for instance, okay, we just proved that this is measurable. Uh, <coughs> how can we express this set here? For instance, you can see this set uh, where here is, is closed, so you include this is a way to see it as an intersection of a, of a set of this kind that we know that are inter that are measurable, so we know that this is measurable because we just prove we take the countable intersection, we are within a sigma algebra, so no problem. This is also uh, measurable. Okay. And okay, then of course you have that minus infinity B. This is the very easy in the sense that you can see it as B uh, plus infinity complement. So we know that this is, we just proved that this is immeasurable. You take the complement, you stay within the sigma algebra. <coughs> then what you have, uh, you have, okay, the same. If you get this, you can see this as uh, the complement of B plus infinity C, which is measurable. And uh, all the, so this is, uh, unbounded interval, all the bounded interval, okay, can be expressed in that way, a, b, you say a, b has the intersection of a plus infinity intersected uh, b minus infinity, uh, no, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> minus infinity b, and, uh, okay, this is then you have uh, a, b, you have a plus infinity, plus minus infinity, b, and, uh, okay, just to be, to write all of them, infinity b, this is a uh, plus infinity, plus b, minus infinity b, and so what remains, it remains the closet. So we have A plus infinity intersected minus infinity B. So we are doing operation that um, allows us to, to remain within the sigma algebra. Okay. Okay, now uh, we'll... Uh, um, um, I will just give you a brief, a brief, uh, um, I mean, a sketch of the proof of, uh, of a result which concerns real number. And uh, I mean, such a result is peculiar to of the of the one-dimensional space. Okay, I will give just a brief, I mean, a sketch of the proof. You can. You can find the details in, uh, in the book of Royden at, uh, I think it's chapter two in section uh, five, maybe. Yeah, chapter two. So the theorem is the following. Yes, we, we will use it, just give you a sketch of the proof. Okay, the theorem. So this tells you that every open set in R, so this is, this is valid in R. So it can be written as a countable union
of this joint open interval. Okay, so let me first raise here. Okay, so we start by uh, a G, an open set in R. Okay, and then uh, we consider for any element X in G, we consider ix, so let ix, uh, the largest somehow, the, the maximal open interval, the maximal uh, open interval Containing e containing x x and such that i x lies in G, okay? Which is in G? Okay, is in G. So you can. I, I, you, you, can, you can see that Ix uh, has the union of all uh, open intervals that contain x and which lies in, uh, in G, okay? <coughs> okay, we see that uh, um, okay. we, we observe the following, that if you have x and x prime in G, and you consider the corresponding maximal interval ix and ix prime, then we have that they are disjoint ix intersected ix prime is equal to the empty set. <coughs> I mean, or let's put it in that way, either are disjoint or they are identical, okay? <coughs> because why? Okay, because um, somehow if they intersect, you still end up with an open interval which contains both. Okay, so the intersection must be must be must be empty. Otherwise, you, you get a contradiction. Okay, because if you take the union, you would obtain a largest interval, and th this means that you are not you are not started by the maximal one. Okay. Okay, because Okay, so we have that clearly, we have that, that we can express G has the union of this Ix in X with X over the X uh, belonging of G. Okay, now what remains to prove is that, uh, I mean, th this is too much. So it is enough to consider a countable union. And then we are finished. 
Okay, so it is, it is sufficient. consider countable union. So, eh? this one? Okay, so you have that. Assume that this intersection is not empty, okay? It will, it will give you another open interval which contains x, x prime, and x and x prime, okay? So if you, if you take the union, you obtain a larger set, a larger, a larger, um, a larger, a larger interval, okay? But you are assuming that i x, so a larger interval which contains both x and x prime. Okay, so the, the, the larger interval which contain x, but you you started by the hypothesis that i x i x is the is the is the largest one. Okay, so this this leads you a contradiction. Okay, are you convinced or? <laughs> so consider the union. Imagine the union. The union would be if this is if this is not not empty would be would be a, a larger open interval, okay? So you, you, you get a contradiction because you obtain an open interval which still satisfies this fact which, I, which x belongs to, um, to, this, this, to this new interval, but you started by the hypothesis that i x was, was, the max, was, was the biggest one which satisfied this. Okay, so it is sufficient to consider a countable union because you know that, so we know that Q rational number is dense uh, in R. Okay, it's dense in R. Okay, so we have that for any, for any interval in this union, Ix, Ix in the union, uh, it is possible to select, um, okay, to associate x alpha, a rational number x alpha, uh, rational, okay. Okay, x alpha over uh, belonging to i x, and so you can prove that this map, which associates i x to x alpha, is uh, is bijective, is injective. So, is injective. So basically, you can consider the union over this index over this x alpha in Q. And so you, you, so you have that, you have that G is the union over this X, X alpha over of I X, the, where the X alpha satisfies this property. And so this is a countable union. Okay, this is sketch of this proof. Okay. And now we will, uh, how, the next step. This is a, this is a, is a maximum or minimum? The maximum. maximum. The largest. The, the, the largest, I mean. Or you consider it as the maximum in the sense that it's the union of all, uh, of all the open interval containing x and such that i x is in g. This is why I tell you that if you consider a union, you, you reach a contradiction because you will obtain something which is even larger and uh, okay. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so with this uh, theorem, what we so by this theorem, what we we get, we saw that uh, uh, any uh, any open interval, uh, sorry, any open set, any open set is uh, is measurable. Okay, because. Okay, because we saw, of course, that uh, open interval are measurable, and we just proved that we can we can express the any open set as the countable union of of open intervals. So we just use the, the fact that um, the measurable set are sigma algebra. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we can introduce uh, um, a new sigma algebra which is the sigma algebra of, uh, of the Borel set, it will be the sigma algebra generated by, by the, the open set, okay? So I will denote it as this B, will be the sigma algebra, uh, sigma algebra um, of Borel set uh, So this is a definition <laughs> And this is the way you, you construct it, is that is the sigma algebra uh, generated by the open set. Okay. So I don't know how familiar you are with sigma algebra, but I just give you um, briefly what means sigma uh, will give you will tell you what is the sigma algebra generated by a collection of set okay you can you can see it actually in in two ways which are of course equivalent so you have that given this definition you have that a sigma algebra generated by a collection of set, in this case the open set, generated by a collection of set is what? Uh, is the, uh, okay, is the smallest sigma algebra which contains such a collection. <coughs> or either you can think of it such a collection. Okay. Uh, you can see it in that way, or even has the um, the intersection of all sigma algebra containing such, such a collection, okay? Or is uh, the intersection of all sigma algebra. That contains uh, that contain um, such a collection. Okay, so in, in, in this is a general definition. You can apply this for for the sigma algebra generated by the open set. Okay. Okay. So what immediately uh, comes from this? So you have that. We just see, uh, okay. I will denote with uh, uh, with you the collection of open set. Um, okay, collection of open set. And so B is uh, the sigma algebra generated by you. We, I use this. Uh, this, uh, okay, B are the Borel set over R, I mean, of course, but just to stress. 
So we just saw that you, the open set, are uh, contained in, uh, in a collection of measurable sets. So automatically from this and uh, this definition, we have that the sigma algebra of the Borel set, which is precisely sigma u, is, because of this, is contained in the sigma algebra of, um, of measurable set. Okay, in the following, we will see that this inclusion is indeed a strict inclusion. So it exists a measurable set which is not a Borel set, okay? We will see later on. Hmm? No, B of R <coughs> is the sigma algebra of Borel set. This is, the, uh, this is a definition, okay? This is not uh, just a terminology. Usually in the book you find this B to, to denote the sigma algebra of Borel set, this italic. Uh, sigma means sigma algebra, uh, sigma algebra, the sigma algebra generated by you. Um, this is, yeah, uh, this means sigma algebra uh, generated by, uh, by you, okay? This is just I mean, it's a definition, um, terminology. Okay. Okay, so ju just, just put it as a theorem, just to be, um, to fix the idea. So you have that uh, every um, Borel set, Borel set is a set in, in the sigma algebra of Borel. Every Borel set is, is measurable, okay? Okay. Okay, now we can define, um, so we are in position to define uh, uh, the Lebesgue measure because so far we just define a set function, we just define the outer measure, okay? Now we define the, um, uh, the Lebesgue measure, okay? Okay, so of course we start by a measurable set, let E be a measurable set. So we define the Lebesgue measure uh, of E measure, okay, we shall denote it as uh, with M without any star, the Lebesgue measure of E, um, we, we will call it M of E, Okay, to be, to be the outer, to be the outer measure of E. So M of E, by definition, will be the outer measure of E. So basically, what is the Lebesgue measure? It's nothing that somehow the restriction of the outer measure over the, the set, of the measurable set, okay? So you have that M is defined here. So it takes values, I mean, the, the domain is the, is the sigma algebra of a measurable set, the codomain is the extended real line, and to each measurable set, you just define it as the um, the outer measure of E, okay? So you can see it. Uh, you are restricting M star to the set, to the measurable set, okay? Okay, now we will prove some property. No, doesn't satisfy the, the, the outer measure, doesn't satisfy the countable uh, additivity pro 
I, we will prove now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but I mean, we, no, we will prove that the Lebesgue measure satisfies if it is countable additive. Now we will prove. No. The other measure, no, it's not countable additive. Okay, once approved. I mean, we will uh, we will construct. Yeah, we will construct some counterexample. We will. Con it's not easy. <laughs> uh, probably in uh, on Monday. Let me see. Probably on Monday, we will introduce a non-measurable set which require a quite tricky argument. No, a non-measurable, a non-measurable set. So a set which is doesn't belong to the, so which belongs to the set of parts. Okay, then I will anticipate. We will construct a set. We will call it just not to introduce so many, which a set T, which belongs to the set of, is a subset of R, but T doesn't belong to R. So a non-measurable set. Okay, and by this we can provide what you what you ask. Yeah, exactly. This is the difference between the two, between outer measure and the back measure, the domain. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because you always have in mind that when you define a function, doesn't uh, define a function is not always to define the law; it's also to define the domain and the codomain. This is a part of the definition of a function. Okay. No, it's the converse. P of R is larger than the measurable set. No? So you, usually we, you will end up with this, uh, with this set of inclusion. You will have P of R will strictly contain the measurable set. This, no? And this will strictly contain the Borel, uh, this Borel set, OK? It's not close. Yeah, the countable additivity property. Yeah, this is one reason. Yeah. Okay. Counterexample, not okay. Not to say that there is. Yeah, but I mean, I need the time to introduce. Yeah, I, I didn't get your the, your remark. Why? Okay. Why outer measure? Why is outer measure uh, not counting the additivity? Because you. In next lecture, you, I will provide you an example of a sequence of set that doesn't satisfy this property, but it takes time, okay? Okay. Okay, now we will see this proposition. <coughs> okay, let EI <coughs> be a sequence of measurable set. Okay, then we have the following fact. So the first one is the easy case, is the easy one. So you have that measure of the union of this EI. Now I take any set, no matter in the hypothesis, any set, no matter if they are disjoint or not. Okay. This is less or equal than the sum of I of the union of EI. Then, if in addition you assume that this set in the sequence are, are also pairwise disjoint, so if the sets EI are in addition pairwise disjoint, <coughs> Then we get indeed the countable additive property. G 
which is equal to the sum of E i. Okay. Okay, last time we prove a kind of this, but for finite set. For finite, yeah, for finite, uh, for finite union, okay? And, but we will, we will use this in this proof. Okay, this fact is very, is very easy, okay? Proof. Okay, this from w comes from what? Why this is true? Exactly. So this is, okay, so this part one, because we know that it solves for outer measure and so one is, okay, is, uh, is trivial. Because, okay, since, um, plus uh, subadditive um, countable property. Okay. Okay, two. So two is the interesting part. Okay, first consider only a finite sequence of set EI. So consider only a finite sequence of set EI. Okay. Uh, let me change to Okay, we know that we have the following that M what we prove. We prove that if you if you remind that A union E I I from one to uh, K let's K is equal to M star of A intersected EI. So do you remember this property? We proved it last time. So you take A over A equal to R. So we can replace this one with M union of EI. So we can get rid of this star because we are not, okay, okay, we are doing with sum of EI, okay? So this is a finite additive property. Okay, so, uh, okay, we want to prove this, this equality. We will prove the two sides. One is, of course, this one is, uh, that this is less than this, is easy. The other one, we require a bit, it's still easy, but, <coughs> so we have that. Uh, okay, we okay we observe. That of course, this countable union. This countable union contains uh, the finite union. Okay. And so by the monotonicity property, we have that the Lebesgue measure of the union of this, this countable union is larger or equal than the measure of uh, the finite union We use this, use the property star. Okay. Okay, we observe that the, 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 the left-hand side of this inequality does not depend on K. We use the same trick, but we can get to the limit. So since 
the left hand side of the above in quality uh, does not depend depend upon k then we have that we if, if we pass to the limit we obtain the following okay okay uh, the reverse inequality comes from the uh, the countable subadditive property okay this is one this is a and b uh, you have that the fact that um, the reverse so you have that the measure of e i Less. So this is the uh, countable subadditive property. Okay, so you combine A plus B and we get the thesis. Okay, that's proof. Okay. And now we prove a proposition uh, uh, we tells you that somehow how can you use some monotonicity property of, uh, of a sequence of set. If you have a set, an infinite decreasing uh, sequence of set, how can you compute the measure of, uh, of the intersection of, of such a set? It's okay. Okay. So, the proposition is the following. Okay, so let EN be uh, a decreasing sequence of measurable set so or namely this means that you have that the E n plus one set is contained in E n uh, for any n. Okay. Okay. In addition, we assume that, for instance, um, the first one set in that collection, the set E one, has finite measure. Okay. I mean, um, actually, you can. It's enough to require to get what what we want to prove it would be enough to require that a set in the sequence is finite. But, I mean, for the sake of simplicity, I choose the first one. Because this is, okay, we will, we will want to state a property that uh, involves the, the notion of limit. So it's enough that from one point on, this property is satisfied. Okay, anyway, take this. Okay, then, what we have 
Then we have that the measure of this, the countable intersection of this set is equal, is equal to the limit as n tends to plus infinity of the measure of En. Okay? This is a countable intersection. Okay, let's start the proof. Okay, so consider, just introduce uh, this terminology, this notion, call E uh, the inter this intersection, so the intersection of En over N. Okay, and uh, define some auxiliary set, uh, call them uh, F, uh, okay, F, Fn equal to um, En minus 1, okay, or maybe E1, En minus En plus 1 for any N. And we claim the following fact that will help us to, to prove that um, we have that E1, so the first set, in the, is equal to E uh, union, the union of this Fi, okay? Okay, we start by one inclusion. We prove this claim. We prove this claim. Okay, we have that. Okay, we have that E is contained in E1 and Okay, this is, uh, I think this is the easy, oh, this is the easy part. E1 plus one is contained in E1. So we have that E, this gives you that E a uh, union, uh, union, the union, this uh, countable union uh, is contained in, in E1. Okay, now we prove the, the, the other inclusion. Okay. So we pick one X in E1. Okay, at that point we have uh, two possibility, two possibilities. Possibilities. Okay, so uh, so either we have that x belong to uh, e i for any index i. In that case, we have that if it, this is true, x would belong to e, which is uh, the intersection of this e i the countable intersection, uh, or we have another possibility, uh, there must exist some index i bar, uh, of course in n, uh, such that we have that x uh, does not belong to e i bar, but uh, x belongs to uh, e i for any i um, less than, than uh, this i bar, so you can always choose. You can always find this uh, this smallest this smallest integer. And in that case, okay. In that case, we also have that uh, being.
EI a decreasing sequence sequence of sets. Okay, we have also that X does not belong for EI for any I larger than I bar. So we can say that X does not belong to E, but X belongs to F I bar minus one which is, I recall you, this is equal to EI uh, minus 1 minus EI. Uh, uh, and even more so, X, of course, belongs to the, the union <laughs> uh, of FI. So at the end, what we show is that indeed if we combine these two, um, the, the two inclusion, we have that E1 is equal to E uh, union, this union of Fi1 to infinity, okay? So now we will use this, uh, this decomposition. Okay. Where is here? Okay, now uh, we used the fact that uh, they are measurable. So we want to compute the measure of that set. And they are disjoint. Okay, so we have that since E so this countable intersection and this collection of set uh, EI minus EI plus 1 uh, are measurable and disjoint We have that, but by what we prove uh, before, we have that the measure of E1 is equal to the measure of E plus the sum of I of the measure of this set here, Oof, E I plus 1, okay. Okay, this just come from uh, the fact that uh, the, from the countable additiv additivity property. Now we use the fact that they are measurable and uh, we use uh, EI as test um, set. Okay, we have this, we have these two facts, we have this and we have that the measure of EI can be expressed as the measure of EI intersected EI plus 1 plus the measure of EI minus EI plus 1, okay? So you use, uh, here you use the, the, the measurability of EI plus 1 and you consider EI just as a test set, okay? So this will give you that since this is equal to the measure of EI plus 1 plus oh, the measure of EI minus EI plus 1. Okay. Okay, now we observe that all of, because of this hypothesis, uh, okay, I erase the hypothesis that the first, the, the first set in the sequence has, has finite measure and we know they are a decreasing sequence of set, 
we know that all these quantity are finite, okay? Here, here, you know, on the left and on, on the right side of this inequality are finite. So we can, uh, uh, we can bring this on the, on the other side. So we have that the measure, okay, since uh, uh, all, if you want, these uh, measures are finite because of this hypothesis, plus one is finite, uh, we can exchange, we have that the, me the measure of EI minus EI plus one is equal to the measure of EI minus the measure of EI plus one, okay? Okay. And uh, uh, we use this, we insert this inequality here, okay? We go on here, so we use this, put it here, and we continue. Okay, so this is equal to the measure of V plus the sum of the measure of uh, EI minus the measure of okay okay you can see it as the measure of E plus the limit has, for instance, uh, n goes to plus infinity of i, which goes from 1 to n, and the measure of e i minus the measure of e plus i. Okay, then, oh, what you have, uh, so basically, well, I will skip some, okay, but because it's, it's very easy. So you will end up, at the end, you will have that n plus infinity. Minus from two to n plus i. So it's telescopic, so you, you can, this, this is the measure of V, uh, plus the limit as n goes to plus infinity of measure of E1 mm, minus, no, okay, I can put the limit, okay, just put the limit uh, just here because the limit as n goes to plus infinity of the measure of En. Okay, this, these are the parts that we are interested in. Okay, um, so ju just let me erase this one. Okay, we know that uh, uh, everything is finite, so we, can, we, we know that the measure of E1 is equal to these things, okay? So since everything is finite, by hypothesis, I can do this. And so finally, um, so I use, so I want to stress this, so this measure of E1 is, fi is finite, and everything is finite, so I have that the measure of V of this countable intersection is under our hypothesis the limit as n goes to plus infinity of the measure of e, e of e n. Okay, and that concludes the proof. Okay.
<clears throat> okay, so now the question is concerning this, uh, uh, this proposition. So do you think that uh, this hypothesis that, uh, that we made on the first set Ah, sorry. <laughs> so uh, I was saying that if you think that the, the hypothesis that the, the measure of the first set of okay, one set in, 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 the, in the sequence is finite is really necessary, or we can remove it and obtain the same result. What do you think? I mean, the extra hypothesis that we made that the first set is uh, as finite measure, do you think is necessary to, is necessary, why? Yeah, n or, or n plus infinity. This is a decreasing sequence, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, just to to write what she said. Okay. So the hypothesis. Um, that measure of E1, or okay, any set is necessary. In fact, we can construct a counterexample. So you consider, for instance, this sequence of unbounded set, unbounded set. this is still um, a decreasing sequence, so you can define it them as that way. E2 equal to 2 plus infinity, so you have that En is equal to N plus infinity. Okay, this is a decreasing sequence of measurable set. And uh, okay, what else? Okay, so but of course they they, they do, do not satisfy the, the fact that the first one has finite measure because you have that the measure of e one is uh, plus infinity. Okay, so we okay. So as she said, we have that the intersection of this one is uh, is the empty set. Because if you assume that there is a point x in the intersection, you will always find an index n which steps over the not that set x. And uh, they, they all have uh, uh, infinite measure. So we, what you, you get, you get that uh, you would have that 0 is equal to the measure of the empty set, which is equal to the measure of the, that intersection. But this is strictly less. Uh, then the limit as n tends goes to plus infinity of the measure of E n, which is of course plus infinity, okay? So indeed that hypothesis was necessary. Okay. Oh, and now I will start to give you a really fundamental proposition. Probably we will give, uh, we'll I mean, the proof is very long, so uh, for sure we will have to finish next on Monday. Okay.
Okay, this is uh, um, the name of this proposition is uh, characterization by approximation of measurable set. So which provides you a way to uh, approximate measurable set by nice set. So. So in the book uh, of Roy, then this proposition uh, is left as an exercise, but I think it's, it's worth it to see it during the lesson. Theorization. OK. By approximation. Uh, of Lebesgue measurable sets. Okay, so we will prove uh, uh, some equivalent uh, proposition. So we start by E B uh, any set. Okay, so any set. Then the following five statements are equivalent. Okay. So the first i is e is measurable. So i is given uh, any epsilon positive. Uh, there is an open set. O, which contains E, such that the outer measure of O minus E is less than epsilon. Okay, here I use outer measure, okay, because uh, you have to read it, let E be, a, so we don't know if uh, O minus E is uh, its measure, okay. Down 3i, 3i. Uh, is um, is uh, similar no with but concern closed set so given again epsilon positive uh, there is this time a closed set set f which is contained in e and such that uh, the outer measure of e minus f is less than epsilon. Then we can do more. We have a sharper uh, approximation if we use set in this g delta and f sigma uh, collection. So we have that there is um, a set g in uh, G delta. So let me observe that is that is a Borel set, okay? Because G delta, do you remember what is G delta? Okay, this is okay. So this is a Borel set. Okay, such that. Okay, E is contained in G, and uh, uh, the outer measure of G minus E is zero. Okay, analogously, you have that far. Uh, there is a set F in F sigma, such that this is uh, still a Borel set, such that uh, um, F is contained in E, and the outer measure of uh, E minus F is zero. Okay, and then, 
Okay, if you, uh, if you assume, if you do, if you put an extra uh, hypothesis on E, so the extra hypothesis is that uh, um, E has a finite outer measure. So this is uh, one, two. Okay, if this is five, if uh, Okay, if in addition m star of e is finite, okay, the above, uh, the, all, all the above statement, statement uh, are equivalent to the following. Okay, given epsilon positive, uh, there is a finite collection of open interval, there is a finite okay, union uh, U of open intervals Okay, such that you deal here with the symmetric difference. Uh, the symmetric difference, the, the outer measure of the symmetric difference between E and this union is small, okay? Uh, U, E. Okay, I recall you that uh, uh, what is the symmetric difference? You have A, B, uh, any set. So you have that A symmetric difference, which is denoted with this little triangle of B, is the union of what? The difference of the two set. This is, uh, it, okay, it, the name is symmetric difference because, of course, it is symmetric in A and B, okay? Okay, so if you, if you in addition, you know this, you can say more. You can say that the symmetric difference of, of uh, E with a finite union of open intervals is, is small. Okay. Uh, okay, the proof is long. And uh, for today, I just, I, I just outline uh, uh, the strategy to prove this, and <clears throat> which requires somehow five, uh, five three, um, three steps. Okay, so in step A, in step A, you, uh, you use this extra uh, condition. You prove things uh, under this hypothesis that M star of E is finite, and you will prove that I implies uh, 2I, which co-implies um, 6. Okay, then. Then in the step B, okay, step B, we use uh, step A, step A, <laughs> sorry, step A, um, okay, uh, with, um, let, 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 let me, let me do that. So we, 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 we get rid of this hypothesis, so we remove we just consider the general case, the hypothesis um, M star of V. This, so we, we, we deal under any, uh, without any hypothesis on E. And we use, uh, we use step A to prove the following uh, implication. So we prove, we prove, we prove that I uh, implies to I implies uh, four implies I. Okay. And then finally we conclude with step C. Step C. Okay, we use uh, B. So we use uh, B to prove. 
Така, супров, супров. Which I implies three I, which implies five, which implies I. Okay. So this would be the somehow the. This is the outline of the proof, the strategy that we will prove. But I, I will, uh, I will show you the proof tomorrow be, uh, on Monday. Okay, so I think we can stop here today. Was it clear this fact of the maximal the 